Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. I'll be refuting Paul Joseph Watson in his new video called Stop Normalizing Regressive Belief Systems in the Name of Progressive and Diversity. We're going to be showing Paul he's a real banana and he's really made a banana out of this one. So we're going to debunk his points. It's in regards to a BBC documentary question and answer session with some Nikabi sisters. Now what is so amazing about this is the fact that Paul actually disagrees with people like Majid Nawaz because Majid Nawaz, who's a reform, he believes in uh, Islamic reformism, he says that although he disagrees with the burqa, he says that we shouldn't actually ban the burqa because there are sisters who want to do it from their own free will and their own free choice. Yet that should be entitled being progressive, that is part of being feminism. Feminism is part of being able to make your choices regardless what they are. Yet Paul argues that we should stop normalizing regressive beliefs, beliefs that are going backwards and against progressive idea. So you see this false dichotomy that he's portraying. See, let's watch his video and you will see how many errors and mistakes this guy makes. And he, in fact, he even made a lie in his video. Let's have a listen. He says we shouldn't say certain things to burqa-wearing Muslims. They got some veiled women to read out hypothetical questions and then lecture the viewer about how ignorant and bigoted they are. I've got a few questions. You can't be a feminist and be wearing a burqa. If you were to say that to me, they would be like, oh, she's the biggest feminist you can find. Okay, so why did one of the first ever Arab Muslim feminist groups, the Egyptian Feminist Union, encourage women to discard their burqas? The very act of Arab feminist leaders like Huda Sharawi discarding the burqa was one of the symbolic acts that led to Muslim women in Egypt winning the right to an education. Rejecting the burqa has been an integral part of actual feminism in the Middle East for nearly a hundred years. Yes, that may be true, Paul, but there are people who are actually doing it from their own choice. So you're conflating the two together. You're saying that there is a feminist movement coming out declaring that they are oppressed because there's a system that tells them they, they, they have to wear the hijab or the niqab. And of course, there are fem that, that is part of their feminism because yes, and rightly so, they could promote to say we're against this. And that's what declares them being feminist. However, there are people who are making their own choices, yet they should be equally called feminism too. Because at the end of the day, feminism defines a person to, to give them the freedom to do what they please, right? So you're basically conflating the two together. You're saying, oh, these Muslim women shouldn't yeah, it's it's a it's false. It's a contradiction that they're saying that they're feminists and they're sticking up for feminism when there are Muslim sisters in those countries who are trying to, uh, you know, voice out to say we don't want to wear the hijab. Well, you're conflating the two together because yes, there are systems that may oppress those particular sisters and where they want to open their veils but you can't conflate that to sisters living in the west who want to wear it you see so if they want to wear it then that is part of their feminism and as you know there are even secularists who are trying to ban the burqa so if they're trying to ban the burqa that goes against feminism because the primary belief of feminism is to be liberated upon your own personal choices and this is one of it. really did the 16 year old girl in canada who was strangled to death by her own brother for not wearing the veil get to make her own choice you see, again, he's picking out these certain situations where people were either killed or tortured for not wearing it. Again, you can't superimpose those particular cases and then over simplify it and generalize it for the entire rest of the Muslim women population. Now, here you might pick out Saudi Arabia or you might pick out Yemen or whatever country is forcing it, yet Muslims make up 50 countries in the whole world so to seclude it and confine it to one particular country and say oh look the hijab is a sign of oppression 
because that particular country forces them to wear it, you can't then simplify and generalize it upon the whole Muslim women around the world, around the 50 countries, Muslim countries in the world. The four-year-old girl in India whose father smashed her brains out on... Again, another silly comparison. Let's continue with... They're literally herded around like farmyard animals. Did the woman in Saudi Arabia who wore a skirt get a choice? Now, notice the hypocrisy. Again, he appeals to Saudi Arabia that forces women to wear uh, a, a certain dress code. But let's show him the hypocrisy and have a look at this. Here, let's look at this, Mr. Paul. Here's a feminist who takes off her clothes and she gets arrested in an American court. Let's look at her feminism being oppressed. <laughs> Okay, so basically this woman goes on a long rant saying that my freedoms, uh, I guess she was arrested in public for public nudity and she basically says it's natural for me to be nude and of course, you know, she goes in front of the judge and uh, goes on a rant talking about how it liberates her and she wants to be nude and in fact, she goes nude. Have a look. So basically the judge calls her to be arrested. Now So as you can see, the woman is being arrested. So this is the feminist in your secular world. She's being arrested because that's basically her freedom and her right to remove her clothes. Yet, where is the feminism here? So basically, you see the double standards and the hypocrisy. We, every country has a different moral standard. Saudi Arabia basically says they have to wear the niqab or the hijab and so forth. So basically, if you go against that country, you should just pack up your bags and leave. They made that testimony to you. So when he picks out a few Muslims protesting about their feminism, well, they should just leave the country. So you would argue that the woman who took off her uh, clothes in the secular world she went against the constitution which bans public nudity so are you going to now criticize the secular world and say look uh, how can uh, how can they do this towards feminism we're supposed to be the liberators we're supposed to be progressive yet you're basically having a system that uh, normalizes regressive belief it actually removes feminism. It oppresses feminism in your countries. Oh, that's right. She was hunted down by the police and arrested. Yes, exactly. The woman that went nude in your country was arrested. Oh, so practical. Practical. Oh. Really? Okay, see, this guy's a jerk, and this is why he's a jerk. You see, when you don't go out and judge one particular issue and then uh, disagree with the rest. I mean, that's a false dichotomy. You're basically conflating it again. When a Muslim woman says it's practical, did you listen to what she said when she said it was practical? She doesn't have to wake up earlier to go to work because she has to spend time in front of the mirror putting all this makeup on which is going to take her hours did you consider the fact that she doesn't have to keep changing her clothes and going shopping all the time you know with a different dress each day because that's what society pressures demand she doesn't have to keep buying these different color high heels and shoes yes that is the practical things she's actually discussing on a general basis
on an overall basis. Of course, she's going to have other challenges living amongst non-Muslims and so forth. Of course, she's going to have other challenges, but we're talking about practicality on a general basis. She finds a lot more freedom where she doesn't have to, you know, bend her back down to the uh, social pressures of society that she has to blow dry her hair she has to cut her hair she has to do all of these things just to present herself in the public sphere okay so basically the man has no argument it's i mean the arguments are so weak it's incredible <laughs> Okay, so if Muslim women who wear the burqa aren't oppressed, why do Muslim women in Iran literally call on Westerners to help them fight oppression by violating the law on head coverings? If it's not... A so again, so this is again a false comparison. Picking out a few women because they feel that they are oppressed, it doesn't mean it's on a general basis. Those women in Saudi Arabia, do you see them protesting in masses where they want to take off their hijab? If those women did feel oppressed, they have the option of leaving the country. It's as simple as that. But you see, Paul Joseph doesn't want that. Paul Joseph wants to secularize those Muslim countries. And that's basically what they want to do. I mean, that's like making the argument Muslims living in the West, men, for example, they want to have polygamous marriages in this country. Now, should I go protest in the street and say I want a polygamous marriage? Well, if I do, does that mean that the Australian system is oppressing my feminism, my liberal rights? Maybe they are. But should we now blame the secular system for doing that? I'm pretty sure Paul will say, oh, well, if you don't like it in the secular world, then pack up your bags and go to a Muslim country. And if you want to practice polygamy in that world, then go. Go live in the Middle East. Yet Paul is now telling us, no, I'm not even safe in the Middle East because he wants to come there and abolish Sharia law and Islam and he wants to put secularism in those countries. You know, these sisters are living in the West. They would tell you that they are oppressed, but they're not telling you oppressed. They're saying, this is my freedom of right. This is my freedom of choice. This is what I want to do. And Paul's saying, no, no, you can't do that because there's a handful of Muslims over there and they're saying they're, they feel oppressed because of what some certain government does. Therefore, this applies to all Muslims living wherever they want. So since Paul is so much for feminism, where's my feminism? I want Paul to make a video that a Muslim wants to do polygamous marriages here in the West. And if I'm shunned, if I'm not allowed to do that, will he now promote and stick up for my feminism? You know, Paul's argument is as silly as this, folks. As you know, in America, taking mar uh, marijuana is legal. You can do it. Uh, I think you can do it in places like Spain as well. But here in Australia, you can't do it. You're not allowed to have marijuana and so forth. Uh, only medical cannabis and so forth, but you can't, you can't actually have marijuana. Like you can't grow it and things like this. You can't have uh, big loads of marijuana and so forth and, and, and use it and, and so forth and, and freely smoke it in, the, in that aspect. Because the Australian system does not allow it because it does not allow it should i now generalize do we now generalize it for the whole world and say people in america have to stop taking marijuana and in different parts of europe, in different parts of europe only because australia oppresses people for doing so should paul now make that same generalization and argument for the rest of the population the west of the west the rest of the western world because australia doesn't allow it therefore it's it's oppressive it shows to be oppressive therefore people in america should not be able to do it should i now say people in america should stop having marijuana should stop having it because australia discriminates against it and bans it would paul go after the australian constitution
would he go after the Australian Constitution and say they are forcing they are forcing people not to do it? If they are regressive, they're not progressive thinkers. They should change the law. Will Paul now come to Australia and say drugs should be legal? It should be legal because you know what? People in America weren't allowed to do it, but now they're free. And this is their progression. This is their liberation. Would Paul now impose that to Great Britain and to Australia and say, no, it should now be free? Would he now do that as well? Because different countries have different legal and moral systems. And then this lunar tune goes on to say, uh, that hijab purity culture covers, segregates, subordinates, silences, jails and kills women and girls around the world if it's not a around the world so basically where is his quotes okay you might find one radical in pakistan a few radicals there you might find a few radicals who are uh, in in saudi arabia that kills and forces and does that but to again generalize that it's incredible these are muslim women living in the west they are saying that we're not being killed our fathers haven't forced this upon us our our brothers haven't forced this on us. Our husbands haven't forced this on us. We're doing this from our free choice. Is he now going to conflate those radical actions elsewhere and then judge these Muslim sisters and say, well, no, they can't. I mean, they have to shut up and they got to take it off because something else is happening on the other part of the world where they're being oppressed. <laughs> Therefore, you need to take it off. You see, actually, Paul Joseph is the radical. He accuses radical extremists for taking and forcing women to put it on, yet he is now being the radical himself and telling women who want to do it to take it off. I mean, look at the false comparison. I mean, this is incredible. It's too loose. If it's not a form of oppression, why are Muslim gangs in London threatening to kill women who don't cover their heads? Again, an, an, a, 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 an extremist group. I mean, I could find... An American living in Texas saying that gay people should be killed. She's showing that fags are not accepted here. So are you going to now generalize and blame the rest of Christianity? Some women are actually having to fight to be able to wear it. Really? Is that why the first thing that women in Syria did after they were liberated from ISIS? Again, another false comparison. Did does Paul Joseph ignore that in France that women are actually banned from wearing it? They have actually protested in, in the street saying we shouldn't be fined. Why are we being fined? Why are we being arrested by the French police? Yet he ignores that and shows a woman in Syria that has been oppressed by ISIS and she takes off her hijab. Look at the false comparison. Patrol Muslim countries forcing women to wear it. Women exposing their hair is only one of the controversial crimes considered to be against local Sharia law. And by the way, we don't undermine a woman who no. does not wear the face veil or the hijab at, at all. all. Really? So are women in Europe who are being beaten by Sharia patrol gangs for not wearing it being undermined? What about what about this, uh, Paul Joseph? If I, if, what about that feminist woman? Why is she being undermined by, you know, being arrested because she wants to take off a particular garment? Why are Muslims being, uh, you know, if I w walked the street and wanted to do a polygamous marriage and told people I want to do polygamous marriage, I would be arrested. So why is my feminism being undermined, Mr. Paul Joseph? women in Sweden who are being refused service in shops if they don't wear it. Are they being undermined? Go back to your own country. When, when it's a problem, something happens. But when you want your curry, when you want your samosas, when you want the glitter, when you want to put bindis on your forehead to go to wireless festival, it's all good. No one who puts bindis on their heads, which, by the way, is a Hindu thing. So why are we even talking about This guy completely misunderstood what the sister was saying. She's basically saying that you're against our practices. You're against, you know, what we want to do and practice in uh, our religion in your country. Yet you want to, as a West, you want to take part in some of those Muslim activities, uh, whether it be Muslim festivals or whether it, you know, to eat their halal food and so forth. So she's basically showing the double standards and the hypocrisy where you guys pick and choose what you want to accept and what you don't.
There are women in Europe who are being beaten by Sharia patrol gangs for not wearing it being undermined. What about women in Sweden who are being refused service in shops if they don't wear it? Are they well, Paul Joseph, did you know that uh, women, Muslim women uh, living in Australia, for example, they are refused jobs because they wear a hijab. So, again, you see the inconsistency. On one hand, you accuse Muslims for forcing the hijab to their uh, employees or, or workers and so forth. Yet, on the other hand, you have Muslim women living in Australia who are finding it very difficult to find a job because they are uh, critiqued uh, because they wear the hijab and they lose uh, uh, employment due to that fact. In fact, my wife has told me that she found it very difficult uh, uh, finding a job uh, wearing a hijab. And she even said to me, she said, if I take my hijab off, I'll find a job that very same day. So don't give me this nonsense that only one system forces it upon the other while your system forces it off thanks to your employment standards. A being undermined. Go back to your own country. When, when it's a problem, something happens. But when you want your curry, when you want your samosas, when you want the glitter, when you want to put bindis on your forehead to go to wireless festival, it's all good. No one who puts bindis on their heads, which, by the way, is a Hindu thing, so... Why are we even talking about it? No one who does that and then goes to music festivals is walking up to Muslims on the street and asking them, why don't you go back to your own country? Where did the BBC... Okay, so he thinks that women, Muslim women, because of wearing the hijab, they don't get approached by the West. Westerners and Islamophobes don't come up to them and say, take it off, go back to your own country. Here, let's look at this case, for example. A Muslim woman was actually harassed. Have a look. I was sick to my stomach when I heard that one of our officers was subjected to threats and taunting simply because of her faith. Now, it makes no difference to me whether she was off duty or on duty at the time. She serves this city. She is an example of everything we would want from our fellow citizens, a commitment to others, a commitment to service, a willingness to do something greater than herself. And what does she get for it? Threats to her life and bigotry, taunts. We can't allow this. It's unacceptable in this city, it's unacceptable in this nation. And it's important to put a human face to this story, which is why I wanted you to meet Officer El Sakari. She has served with distinction in 2014. She ran into a burning building and helped to save a young girl and her grandmother. And then on Saturday, she had to experience a man allegedly yelling at her and her son, go back to your country. Well, this is Officer El Sakari's country. She is an American. She is New York. Okay, so basically she was told to go back to her country. Why? Because of her hijab and her Muslim identity. So this isn't just some made up crap. Uh, this is true stories and true events that take place in the West. Cultural has never not been Islam. Islamic. So it's cultural and not Islamic. Okay, so... Okay, so let's pause it there for a second. Okay, in this section we'll see Paul actually making a lie upon what the sisters have said regarding the hijab. Let's have a look. BBC get these dumb questions from. It's cultural. It's never not been Islam. Islamic. So it's cultural and not Islamic. Okay, so why do you wear it? I am. This guy is so pathetic. I mean, the sisters didn't even say that the reason why they wear it is because of culture. Let's have a look at the full video of what they actually said. Let's have a listen. Oh, it's never no, been Islam. Islamic. So it's cultural and not Islamic. Okay, so why do you wear it? I am wearing it for God. It's an act of worship. Right, so it's cultural, not Islamic. But you wear it for Allah, so it's Islamic. What are you hiding there? Okay, he completely misconstrued. The sisters didn't even conflate it and say that the reason why we wear it is because of culture. They actually said something else was culture. Let's go to the original video. 
Okay, so here is the original video from BBC. Let's see what they said regarding culture. It wasn't that uh, the hijab was a culture or the niqab was a culture. This was Paul's lie upon what the sisters said. Let's see what they said in the original video. Be free. Yes, there are some cultural practices that maybe oppresses women, but it, there, it's cultural. It's never Not been Islam. Islamic. Did you see what she said regarding the culture? She didn't say that the hijab is the culture or the niqab is the culture. She's speaking about some uh, people who culturally force the hijab and niqab on others. See, that's a difference. That's a difference. She never said that the hijab uh, or the niqab is a culture on its own, wearing it. It's not a culture. It's basically a prescription from God. What the culture is, she was talking about, is being oppressed when some people actually oppress women by forcing them to wear it. She was saying that was part of the culture bit. So why did Paul lie and conflate that? So Paul actually edited and cut the video and tried to make it about culture. Let's have a listen. Cultural has never Islam. been Islamic. So it's cultural and not Islamic. So notice how he cut the video where he, the sisters were talking about the culture being part of the oppressive part where some people are forcing them to wear it. It had nothing to do with the hijab and the niqab being culture itself. So he completely edits and manipulates the video. Okay, so why do you wear it? I am wearing it for God. It's an act of worship. Right, so it's cultural, not Islamic. No, she never said it's not is Islamic. You made the presumption it was cultural because you thought that the, when she spoke about it being forced upon someone, okay, you completely dismissed that and you took it as the hijab is being part of the culture. No, she never meant that. She said that in the context of being forced to wear it is part of certain cultures. But you wear it for Allah, so it's Islamic. What are you hiding there? A bomb? <laughs> yeah, why are you laughing about suicide bombings less than three months after a suicide bomber in the UK blew up a bunch of kids at a pop concert? I've also got a few... I mean, this guy is so dumb. <laughs> Seriously. Because the sisters actually are against that. Did you even hear them say that they are against ISIS? And in fact, ISIS will be out there to hunt them. They are making the joke because this is the common question that is agitated and put forward, agitating these sisters constantly. Oh, are you wearing a, a bomb under that? And every time they go through an airport, is there a bomb under that? And every time you want to ban the burqa and, and ban the hijab, you say, oh, Muslim women are hiding guns and weapons under that. So they, it's much easier for them to rob banks and so forth. So basically, of course, they have every right to make a joke of that. They never made a joke of the terrorist attacks. That's your conflation and your systematic, deceitful lying, presuming that the sisters have got no feelings towards what happened at the London Bridge attacks and the Manchester attacks. Two questions for the BBC. Why are you using taxpayer money to normalise the oppression of women? Why are you trying to popularise something that's clearly abnormal for an open liberal society? Why are you... How is this abnormal for an open liberal society if the sisters want to do that? So, in fact, Paul, you are against liberalism. In fact, Majid Nawaz, if Majid Nawaz was here right now and he heard what you said, Majid Nawaz would even be against you. Let's see what Majid Nawaz says. Let's listen to Majid Nawaz now on that point. Continue. The, the Burkini ban or the, Bro sorry, the desire to wear a Burkini is a symbol of Islam today going backwards on gender issues. However, and here's the part. France's ban on this Burkini, I think, is also a sad symbol of liberalism today going backwards in response. So I don't think it has to be a zero sum. So did you hear that? Did you hear that? That is the reformist, the guy that is beloved by these atheist secular think tanks. The man himself also says that it is liberalism that is absolutely shameful for actually banning with the burkini 
women who actually want to wear the burkini. So he actually says it's a stain. It's a stain on liberalism when it wants to put those bans. So how do you actually deal with that, Mr. Joseph? Are you laughing about suicide bombings less than three months after a suicide bomber in the UK blew up a bunch of kids at a pop concert? I've also got a few questions. I also got a question for you, Mr. Paul. Why don't you go off to your Zionist masters where a group of Palestinian kids were playing on the beach. They were playing soccer. And guess what? A uh, tank fire or whatever it was, a helicopter or a, or a submarine fire came in and blew those kids into bits. Do you go out and even condemn and speak at that terrorist attack? Oh, no, that's justified because apparently um, Hamas was hiding weapons and using it, the beach as a bunker. Obviously, that was disproven, but I don't see you calling them terrorists and radicals and extremists and jihadists militant jihadists do you of course you'll only go after militant islam apparently because it's militant islam that is terrorism of course this incredible idiot doesn't even quote that a muslim mosque was actually ran over by a westerner and it happened at finsbury park and that muslim worshiper was run over by a, a lunatic, a white lunatic, crazed terrorist, killing many Muslims, worshippers and injuring many. Of course he won't discuss that. No, 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 of course not. Also trying to normalise other backward Islamic practices like people marrying their cousins, something that's caused a huge spike in childhood deaths in the UK of Muslim children. Again, this is a conflation. Uh, cousins' marriages, yes, there may be birth defects and problems and so forth, but so does immunization. Immunization also causes a lot of birth defects and, in fact, uh, harms a lot of babies as well. But do you dismiss that? No. So why is this some Islamification in the West? You guys have no problem in having people like Lawrence Cross speak about incest even, saying that you can actually have sex with your sister as long as you actually wear protection. Does Mr. Joseph Paul Joseph go after Lawrence Cross for telling the atheist and secular community and the, re the rest in the West that he could actually sleep with his sister so long as he uses protection? Where is that? Where is the standard? So you notice that when Islam has a moral standard on certain issues, Oh, that's Islamification of the West. Yet what about atheistic, atheistic Asian of the actual West as well? But of course, Paul won't speak on that. Continually shoving regressive belief systems down our throats in the name of progressivism and diversity. Women being smothered in black cloths to obey the whims of a brutal, archaic 7th century patriarchy isn't progressive. <laughs> I mean, look at this hypocrisy. This is the same man. Why are you being a hypocrite, Paul? You believe in secularism. You believe in liberalism. You believe in religious rights. So why are you telling us that we have religious rights in the West, yet you want to take away those rights by putting bans because certain Muslim women want to actually wear the burqa or the niqab from their free will? So why are you being a hypocrite by going against liberation itself? Because your liberation apparently teaches freedom of rights, religious rights. So if you want to go to totalitarianism and want to reject and put bans, then how are you even different from the Muslim countries you bloody accuse, you stupid, double-faced hypocrite? And this is the hypocrisy, folks. You're progressive if you accept Western standards. And Western standards tell us that you give religious rights. So why are you now going against that progression? <laughs> so, and you want to go back in time. You want to take that progression away from those Muslims who want to do it. You are really nonsensical. You know, these secular atheists are so funny. They're like, you're progressed if you accept all of our conditions, uh, you know, pedophilia, uh, sex with one sister, if you use condoms and so forth and stuff like that. Well, how come you don't uh, accept polygamy? Should we now turn around and say, because you don't accept polygamy, you're not progressive? See, everyone has different moral standards. It is wrong for call, to call one uh, 
on the other for progression while you actually reject certain things as well in your system.